on the 12th of July 2012. These six men were convicted and sentenced to 20 years each in prison for a heist which they were involved in that happened at the OR Tambo International Airport in 2006. It only took 25 minutes for these six men, along with nine others who were never found, to storm a South African Airways plane holding AK-47 rifles, held up guards and police, and held themselves to bags of foreign and local currency that had been flown in from England. Within these 25 minutes, these men managed to make off with over 100 million rands in what was a clean job, as no shots were fired, and there were also no injuries to both the gunmen and the airport staff. Only a few hours after this heist happened, police would go on and arrest two foreign nationals and three senior managers of the airport. This arrest would also uncover an underground criminal syndicate, which was operating at the OR Tambo International Airport, which included high-ranking police officials, the Department of Home Affairs, and also, the airport's cleaning staff, baggage handlers, and the airline's staff. The conviction came after a trial which lasted for over six years, with more than 50 postponements and 57 testimonies from state witnesses. Three of the convicted men were already serving life sentences. Two, for an unrelated armed robbery case, which involved them bombing and robbing a G4S truck, while the other was already serving 20 years for the murder of witnesses. It is said that a total of five witnesses were murdered soon after the heist took place. These men committed these crimes while on bail for the airport robbery. It was on a Tuesday night, at exactly 7.20 p.m., when, what appeared to be a police van, pulled up at a restricted access gate within the OR Tambo airport. This police van was closely followed by a white Ford Focus. Both vehicles had their sirens and blue lights activated. Inside these two cars were a total of 15 men who were all carrying AK-47 machine guns. Some of these men, the ones who were inside the police van, were wearing full police uniforms. They were also armed. Two of those who were in the Ford Focus had managed to get official airport security badges, which would have allowed them to get in freely, but when they were asked by the airport security to validate their credentials, the men produced firearms, rounded up security staff in the security checkpoint, and ordered them to lie on the floor. Then, the gang would split into two groups, with the men who were wearing police uniforms, holding up the restricted access gate, so that no one can be able to get inside, or exit the airport. While the others proceeded towards the restricted gate, Gate 1. Gate 1 of the airport, was the entrance where large amounts of money, whether local, or, in foreign currency was transported, in and out of the airport. The men who were inside the restricted area, would then attack, and stop the airport security guard force personnel who were transporting bags of money from an awaiting South African Airways flight, which had just arrived from London. No shots were fired, and also, no injuries occurred. A source within the Hawks who was investigating the attack, described the heist as a slick operation, saying, they went for a certain number of boxes. The robbers were told to look for specific, and grab certain containers. They clearly had good info. They knew how to get in and out the airport, what time the plane would arrive, and which exits to use. Within minutes they were gone, clear, of the airport. It only took these 15 men, 25 minutes, to walk out the OR Tambo International Airport, with bags of money which had over, 100 million rands cash, inside them. The money was in numerous foreign currencies, mostly in US dollars. It was being stored at the cargo section of the airport, where high-value and high-risk cargo such as gold, diamonds, and weapons are stored. A man named Musa, who was the airport's parking controller, was recruited by the gang to ensure the aircraft the gang intended to rob parked close to the exit gate. Then, 25 minutes after arriving at the airport, the police van and the Ford Focus exited through the same point of entry at exactly 7.45 p.m. According to the South African Police Service, the men had been planning this robbery since November 2005, when the accused allegedly obtained information that a South African Airways plane was going to transport a substantial amount of cash in its cargo and would land at the OR Tambo International Airport.
Within a few hours after the heist had happened, the South African Police Service would go on and arrest two foreign nationals while they were trying to leave the country at the Bight Bridge border post near Zimbabwe. These two Zimbabwean men were arrested with over 3 million rands with them, which was in cash and also weapons and ammunition. Three days would then go by until the Hawks, alongside the South African Police Service, arrested three senior ACSA managers. So basically, the ACSA, or the airport's company South Africa, is a private company that owns and manages almost all the airports in South Africa. The company is also partially owned by the government as well. The three ACSA managers were there during the night of the robbery, and also, they were the ones who showed where the money was kept. They also knew what time the plane would leave the United Kingdom, and when it would arrive in South Africa. They were also the only ones who had access to restricted zones at the airport. The ACSA would later suspend their aviation licenses upon their arrest. Jeff Haddock, who was the Minister of Transport at that time, announced a 100 million rands plan to upgrade security at airports throughout the whole country. Part of the security upgrade involved the installation of closed-circuit surveillance cameras. However, this didn't help at all, as in 2017, three men managed to steal over 20 million rands cash from the airport. Three months after arresting the people involved in the July 2006 heist, the South African Police Service would also be able to track down the money and be able to recover about 90 million rands. Nathim Thetwa, who was the police minister at that time, ordered for the money to be taken to the Benoni police station in order for it to be kept in a safe until an audit was conducted. However, over 25 million rands of that stolen money was subsequently stolen again. Several years later, in July 2013, Nathim Thetwa was ordered by the Johannesburg High Court to pay an amount of over 40 million rands to a British company for his involvement. Paul Sullivan, who was the head of security at the ACSA, would later come out and confess that the heist was an inside job. O'Sullivan also claimed that, during his time as head of security at the ACSA, he uncovered an underground criminal syndicate, which was operating at the Johannesburg airport, which included high-ranking police officials, customs, immigration and security officials, as well as cleaning staff, baggage handlers, and airline staff. He also went on to say that, he was close to unraveling the syndicate when he was dismissed by ACSA in 2003, for what they called, irreconcilable differences. O'Sullivan later went on to sue the ACSA for a ridiculous 200 million rand in what he said was for defamation of character. Just only six of the 15 men who were involved in the 100 million rand heist were later found guilty at the Johannesburg High Court. The conviction came after a trial that lasted for over six years, more than 50 postponements, and 57 testimonies from state witnesses. Within these six years, five eyewitnesses were murdered, while these six men were on bail. Two of the convicted men were already serving life terms for unrelated armed robberies, while another was serving 20 years for murder, of state witnesses. Three other men implicated in the robbery would later die, before being arrested. They were apparently murdered, the day the heist took place.